Greetings fellow conspirators, Martyrs Vale here, and today I've got a bit of a Thalmcraft tutorial for you. I'm going to be going from the very beginnings of Thalmcraft to sort of the mid-game stuff, basically showing you how to do everything, not all of the, every single detail, but the basics of how you would do stuff. So we're going to start off at the beginning, if we just popped into the world right here, you're going to need to make three things. A Thalmonomicon, the book of all Thalmcraft knowledge that tells you everything that you'll need to know. You'll need to make a basic wand, and you'll need to make a thalmometer. And the first thing that you're going to want to make is the, actually this wand. Pretty easy, you just need two iron caps made with iron nuggets like this. And then you put those into a crafting table like this, and that gives you an iron capped wooden wand. Then with this iron capped wooden wand, you can come over here to a bookcase and right click it. And that will give you a thalmonomicon with shiny purple particles like that. Pretty cool stuff. Now, if we open the Thalmonomicon, we've got a whole bunch of different tabs, and they show us pretty much everything that we can learn in Thalmcraft. So some things we can already see, and if we click on them, we can read about them. Uh, some things are kind of blinking out, and those are things that we can learn about. Some things are grayed out, and so we can't learn about those. And then some things are just missing entirely. There's a bunch of empty space in here. So we're, we're at the very beginning of Thalmcraft, and we, we don't know a lot yet. However, what we do know is in the basic information something about aspects. Aspects of magic are sort of like elements. So you have like earth, fire, air, water, um, entropy, and order. But then you also have some compound aspects. So like air and fire are light, and um, fire and order are energy, and things like that. So every item in the game, every block, every everything that you can have in your inventory, all of it is made up of these aspects. And so in order to progress in Thalmcraft, you're going to need to learn about these aspects. And they come in a few different forms. So the one that we're concerned about right now is called research points. But you'll also come across V and Essentia later. Um, and those are all different kinds of aspects. There's like three different types. Um, but we'll, we'll get into those other ones later. First, we want to do some research. And to do that, we're going to need this thalmometer, which is made with uh, two gold ingots, a piece of glass, and then two shards. Uh, you find these in the world when you're mining. Um, earth shards are the most common, so I suggest using those for cra crafting recipes where the type of shard doesn't matter. So we're going to make a thalmometer. And now the next thing you're going to want to do is scan everything in the world. Bedrock, cobblestone, trees, grass, flowers, animals, items, everything that you can find. Um, we're going to go down here a little bit, but I just wanted to show you this is what we're going to be doing first. So chronologically, scan all this stuff first before doing this stuff that we're going to be doing right now. Um, but just to show you why we're going to be scanning, I'm going to do this right now. So you're also going to need some tables, uh, make about three of these. Then if you hit a table with a wooden wand, that turns it into an arcane workbench. And from here on out, this is pretty much the, uh, the tool that we're going to be using. This is our utility bench that uh, we're going to be making stuff in. We can't use this anymore. We have to use these. You can also make a uh, scribing tools. Then if you put two tables side by side and you right click on them with the scribing tools, it turns it into a research table. And here's where you're going to find all the research points that you gather. So right now we have our six primal aspects, and we don't, but we don't have any other ones. So there's two ways to get more aspects. You could do something like combine them. And so if we combine Aqua and Terra, that gives us Victus, which is life. Uh, and we could do that, but the problem is that generally you only get one um, research point for each two that you combine, unless it's the first time you discover it. So it's not really a good efficient way of doing it. The really good efficient way of doing it is with a thalmometer. So here is roughly the order in which you should scan things in. Um, if you try to scan things that are too far down the line, you won't be able to understand them. So for example, say this grass block. If I hold down right click, you can see in the bottom right hand corner it says you do not have all the knowledge required to understand this. And that's because it's made up of aspects that are complex. There are compound aspects that I need to understand the simpler ones before I get all the way down there. So scan things roughly in this order, but when in doubt just scan something. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. You can always go back and scan it again if you can't understand it. So first thing we want to do is scan a torch. And that gives us the light 
as uh, aspect. So now we have a few research points for light. Then you can do stone, which gives us saxum coal, which will give us potentia. Bedrock will give us vacuous and also a whole bunch of other things. Um, we are, we've already done Victus. So now, um, by the way, you can scan items. So if we scan these seeds, that gives us granum. Uh, now we can scan the grass block. And so we've got herba. Oakwood, that gives us arbor. Trapdoor gives us motus. Iron ore gives us metallum. Then in this chest, we have a splash potion of weakness, which gives us um, mortis and precantatio. Then we have a spawn chicken, so if we actually scan a chicken, hey, come back here. Hey, he's running away, he doesn't want to be scanned. That gives us uh, Volatus and Bestia. And then we can scan Soul Sand, Spiritus, uh, Paper will give us Cognitio, Rotten Flesh will give us Humanus and Corpus, uh, Flint will give us Instrumentum, Wool gives us Panius, I think, and Fabrico. Uh, an apple will give us bammies and uh, I forget what the crop one is. Then a milk bucket will give us Sano in addition. Uh, now we can scan a cake. And since uh, the version of the Thumbcraft that I'm playing with is for the crack pack, we also have some extra aspects. And one of them is Gulas, I think. Um, gluttony. So we want that. Then we can grab a blaze. Scan him. Oh, wait, apparently I can't understand him. Maybe I need to scan this first. There we go. So now we um, now we have alienus. Um, so I think you need darkness before you have alienus. So um, you can also get darkness from obsidian. So that was the blaze. Now we can scan a block of diamond, which gives us uh, greed, lucrum, and vitreous, I believe. Um, spawn a slime. Whoa, hey big guy. That guy gives us the slime aspect. Fence gate gives us a mechanical one as well as iter. Then let's get a zombie out. We might not be able to get this guy actually. Because he's going to burn up. Yeah, it, it seems to have a little bit of trouble with its zombies. Yeah. Um, so, but eventually you'll be able to do it. Actually, tell you what, let's try um, zombie brain. That might give us the aspect that I'm looking for. Let's try it. Ah, okay, Examinus. I think that's the last one. Or Examus, something like that. Then we can do a Spider Eye. And a Hoe, which will give us the Meto. Arrows give us Weapon, or Tellum. Um, either Armor or Leather, either one. Any type of Armor will give you Tutamen. Um, a Pick will give you Perfodio which is mining. Um, then you have a different biome called the Taint, where you can find this Tainted Goo in. Then we're going to want to do Air and Aqua, which is Tempest, I believe. Um, storm, basically. Finally, we need Ethereal Essence to get Aurum, and Snow to get Jellum, I think. And that is about it. I think there are a few more that I may have missed, but this gets you well on your way. So if we go all the way back here to our research table, boom, we can see that we have tons and tons of research points now. Um, we've unlocked pretty much all the aspects. And if we go into our Thaumonomicon, uh, under Aspects of Magic, we can look up all the ones that we've discovered. So there's Air, Alienus, Aqua, Arbor, and it shows you what they're made of. So for instance, Cognitio is made of Terra and Spiritus, and Spiritus is made of Victus and Mortis, blah, 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 blah. This is actually pretty important because you're going to need to know these things later on. And actually, you're going to need to know them right now. So these research points can be put into furthering your knowledge. So you can unlock these blinky things and move further up the tech trees of Thaumcraft by, un by unlocking them in this research table. So in order to do that, you need to have some paper in your inventory, as well as some scribing tools. Then you can grab a research note for something. And I highly, highly recommend getting research expertise and research mastery before you do anything else. These two are going to help you out a lot when you're trying to fill out this Thaumonomicon. So just to, as an example, we'll do research expertise. And if we click on it, that gives us a research note. 
And then we can pop that into our research table. And you can see we've got a little hex grid here with different um, aspects. So we have Ordo, Cognitio, and Census. And somehow we have to connect these up by way of things that they either make up or things that make them up. So for instance, Cognitio um, makes up Humanus. Humanus is made up of Cognitio and Bestia. So if I could connect Humanus to Cognitio, you see a little tiny line there and that means they're connected. If however I tried to connect say, I don't know, Herba, it's grayed out, it doesn't work. So then Humanus also comprises Instrumentum and Instrumentum is also a component in Ordo, but these two don't connect because they're the same ones. So we'll need a little, a little bit of something extra to connect those. And there you go. So you can see that these two are connected. Now we just have to tie in Census. And this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, census, I happen to know, is made up of air. But just in case you didn't know, you can always go back to your Thalmanomicon and find Census made up of air and Spiritus. So we could actually tell you what, let's do Spiritus. Um, then I think we can do Bestia, and uh, what is Bestia made of? Oh, Bestia is made up of life. Oh, okay, so we need to put a little bit of life in here. And that connects them all up, so you can see that we are done. And we can take this out and we have a discovery now. So if we right click this, we get research completed, research expertise, and now this is unlocked in this little glowy thingy, and it shows us what we've learned. So now, um, since we have research expertise unlocked, we can see right in here what these different things are composed of. So Jellum is made of aqua and ordo, for instance. So research expertise is really valuable, as well as research mastery. Get those things first, um, and then you can move on. So you're going to be doing this all throughout the game, um, unlocking things, because there is a ton of stuff to unlock. You have to do research notes for basically all of these. And uh, I'm going to skip over that part because I've already done it and you know this is a tutorial. So cheat sheet, this unlocks everything for us. Um, so you can see exactly how much there is to unlock. There is a ton of stuff everywhere. Yeah, so now that we have that unlocked, um, we're going to need some more research points. So one thing that you can do to get more research points is like let's say for example, I only have one instrumentum left, and I'm going to need a whole lot of instrumentum. So like we did before, we could combine Humanus and Ordo, and that would give us an instrumentum. Um, but then we'll quickly run out of aspects like that. So what I recommend doing is creating a deconstruction table pretty early on in the game. And so you make it pretty simply like this. Um, then this is actually the first thing that we're going to make in an arcane work table, so we'll need some V. And V is kind of hard, well, it's not hard to get, but basically you need to travel around the world and when you're scanning everything, uh, one of the things you need to scan, besides everything that you make in Thalmcraft, um, is aura nodes. And you find these all over the place. So each aura node has different aspects in it, but these aren't research points, these are V. So when you first scan it, you get a certain number of research points. And you get research points for each uh, aura node that you scan. So it doesn't matter whether you are scanning, like for, if I scan this once, the arcane work table, then I can't scan any other arcane work table. It's, they're, all, they're all the same. I don't get any more research points for doing that. However, I can find a different node, say one over here, and I can scan this one, and each one, the first time you scan it, will give you more research points. So that's one way of getting more research points. Um, the other way is the deconstruction table. And to make this, uh, you see we can't get it here because we need 20 Perdicio. So in order to get Perdicio, you would find an aura node that has Perdicio. So this one doesn't actually. It only has Air and Ordo, Invictus. So, uh, but you would go up to it with a wand and hold down right click. And that fills up the wand with V. Now there are only six different kinds of V. They're the, the primal aspects. The other aspects, the compound ones, they do not, they don't fill up your wand. Your wand only has this six. So that makes this a little bit easier. Um, but once you have your V, so I, I have this one that's filled up with a stupid amount of V, um, you can make a deconstruction table. Then I recommend making a sugarcane farm, just a simple sugarcane farm. Um, 
Actually, first let's scan this so I can show you. Sugarcane is made up of air, aqua, and herba. And I think that gives you, if not everything, pretty darn close to everything. Hang on, let me see one thing. Herba, granum, granum is made up of light. Okay, so this gives you almost everything. It gives you terra, aqua, air, ordo. I think everything except for Producio and Ignis. And you, you're not going to run out of those anyway because they're, they're everywhere. So what you do is you plunk your deconstruction table down somewhere and just pop in some sugarcane. And this basically eats the sugarcane, so you can't use it for anything. But you just have this kind of going in the background while you're doing something else. And then every once in a while, um, it does take a little bit, um, but there's a chance that every once in a while, the deconstruction table will isolate one of these aspects. Um, so for either Ordo or Aqua or Air or Terra. And then once it does that, you can take that and that'll give you another research point. So those are the two pretty good ways of getting research points. Again, you can combine these in times of dire, desperate need, but I, I really don't recommend it. Okay, so, oh, and uh, there we go. So we just got some Ordo from it and it just keeps on going like that. Okay, so that covers basically our first two um, types of aspect. We have the research points, which we use to unlock things, and we have V, which we use to craft things. The final type is going to be Essentia, and that's a bit more complicated, uh, but not, it's not too bad. So we'll get into it right now. Um, so if we're crafting things, you'll notice that that costs, I forgot, I forgot how much it costs, but um, it was quite a lot of V. And unfortunately, your iron-capped wooden wand only holds 25 of each V. But you're going to make things that are going to take like, you know, 50 or 100 V. So this wand is not going to be sufficient. You're going to need a better wand. And the next wand up that you can make is a gold-capped great wood wand. So once you've unlocked this in your Thaumonomicon, so you have to unlock the gold wand caps, which are made just like the iron ones. Also have to unlock the great wood wand core, which is made with two great wood logs. So you can see I have those here, and each of these costs some V to make, so three Perdicio and uh, three of each of these. Once you've done that, you can make yourself a Great Wood Wand, and this holds 50 of each V. And as well, it gives you a little bit of a V discount. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit here. So you can see that, okay, let's take these off for a second, without any, any armor on, um, this is 110% V cost, which means that because the iron wand is so cheap to make, it, it's not very efficient at channeling the V, so it costs you a little bit extra. Whereas the gold banded one, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and you can actually make even better wands that only use 90% of the V, or 80%, or something like that. So it's a good idea to progress up in the wand tiers. So you've made your gold banded great wood wand, you're also as early as you can, you're going to want to make these. These are the Goggles of Revealing. And they're super useful because, for one thing, they let you see aura nodes and other um, essentia and aspects that you just see like floating around in the air. If I didn't have these on, then I couldn't see any of this stuff. But it's very useful for that. And as well, it gives you a V discount of 5. So, very useful. Let's actually, um, for instance, so this takes 3 of each V, okay? And if we were to use our iron capped wooden wand, it would take 3.3. If we were to use our gold banded wand, it only takes 3. However, if we were to put on our goggles of revealing, that makes it only take 2.85. So it's, really, it's a really helpful tool to have early on, the goggles of revealing. But now that we're done with this, we're going to want to move on even further. And the next thing we're going to want is this thalmium capped silver wood wand. And this is a lot harder to make than these two because we're going to need both thalmium caps which at first seem just as easy to make but the problem is you have to make an infusion altar as well as do some alchemy um, and again you'll need the infusion altar for the silver wood wand so let's get into alchemy alchemy is pretty fun and it's also a little bit uh, hard to get everything working the way you want it to um, so you'll need a cauldron, first though you'll need a, a lava bucket underneath. You can use different things, you don't necessarily need a lava bucket, you can do, use uh, niter or I think just regular fire, like if you had netherrack and fire, but lava works fine. Um, then you put in a cauldron on top of that, 
And then if you tap it with your wand, it turns it into a crucible. Then you can fill that up with water and it should start bubbling here in a second because there's lava underneath it. I think, yeah, there we go. So you can see it's bubbling. Um, now we can actually start making things in here. So let me plunk down some moss stone. And you can see that moss stone is made up of, it has precantatio, which is the one in the middle. Um, so if we toss in eight moss stone, then we're going to get eight precantatio, as well as eight of these other aspects. And each thalmium that you make takes four precantatio, so that gives us two thalmium. And then we have this leftover, and having leftovers is not a good thing when you're doing this alchemy. Um, it's, it, it generates flux, which is bad. It's just bad stuff. Um, so you want to try to use the least amount of V, or least amount of essentia that you need in order to make stuff, because otherwise it starts doing crazy stuff like this, and yes, it's just not a good time. Um, then once you have these, you can head back over to, to a uh, arcane workbench, turn these into thalmium nuggets, and then turn those into the thalmium caps. But these are not the thalmium caps you're looking for. These are inert thalmium caps, um, so, which means that we can't use them for a wand yet. They are pretty much useless to us except for turning them into charged caps. And in order to do that, we're going to need an infusion altar, but that's way on down the line. First thing we're going to want to do is isolate Essentia. So for this, um, oh, there we go. So you can see the flux going off into the sky. Bye bye, flux. Yeah, so uh, it, 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 it can get kind of crazy. Um, but what you're going to want to do is isolate Essentia. And so you're going to need some arcane stone blocks, arcane blocks, I think. Um, you're going to need a lot of these, so just make a couple of them. Again, use an earth shard because it doesn't matter what type of shard you use. You're going to need an alchemical furnace, which is made like this with a crucible, not a cauldron. You're going to need a V filter, some arcane alembics, some essentia tubes, some water jars, some labels, and some files. And once you've made all this stuff, you're going to want to set it up in this pattern. Alchemical, alchemical furnace and um, the arcane alembics kind of spiraling around like this. And then I put on two essentia tubes on each side. This is just my personal preference for um, how it works. You can get a lot more complicated than this, but for early game stuff, this is going to be fine for you. So what you want to do is grab something that has some essentia that you want. So for instance, if we look at steel, Steel is made up of metallum and ordo. So let's say we wanted the ordo. We plunk the steel in here, and it starts cooking it up. And then if we look here, we can see that the essentia is being uh, refined into these alembics. So if we had more than two essentia, then they would, they would types of essentia, they would go into these different alembics. And also, by the way, if we take off the goggles of revealing, we can't see here. So good thing to have. Um, then you can take a warded jar, and put it down underneath each of these. And then you can put on a label so you can see even better what's on there. And so now we have metallum and ordo. But the problem with this setup is just like that. You see they switch places. Um, these jars will completely drain the uh, arcane alembics. And then the essential will go back up into the alembics in a random order. So this is our metallum one and this is our ordo one. But they're in kind of the wrong spot. Um, so we'd have to switch these around, which is annoying. So what I generally do is I only put one warded jar down, and then for the other one, I take a file, and when it's above um, nine, you can grab it. So there's at least you always need to leave one in there, and that gives you files of Essentia. So then we could just uh, take this and put it, re-put it into the warded jar. Pretty simple. Um, so that'll give you different types of essentia. Let me actually grab a little bit of ordo so that you can see. This is an easier way to do alchemy um, because each of these contains eight essentia. So if you wanted to, you could um, like get all the essentia that you need by brewing it in the alchemical furnace and then toss it in here. And so that gives us 16 ordo. So that's a, a better way to do this if you can do it. Um, so then, once you've got these water jars, we are finally ready to make our infusion altars. So to make those, we're going to need some arcane pedestals made with these arcane stone blocks, um, some arcane stone bricks, 
just a few of these, and a runic matrix, which takes 40 ordo. So you're going to need at least a gold bin, wood, or well, you're going to need a gold bin, wooden wand to make this. Then once you've got all that, it's also going to take 25 of each aspect in order to turn this pattern right here, pedestal, bricks, blocks, runic matrix, into a infusion altar. So if I click it with this wand, which doesn't have 25 of each aspect, it doesn't work. But this wand will. So this is the simplest infusion altar you can make with uh, four pedestals, but I honestly recommend just upgrading it right off the bat because there's very few recipes that only take four components. Most of them will take like, you know, five, between five and eight, and the maximum they can take is 12. So this is how I generally like to make mine. Um, just kind of put them three along each corner like that. Um, so two, two, and then one in the corner. And it makes it look really uh, symmetrical and roundish for Minecraft anyways. Um, and it's, it's a lot easier to do some stuff with this. So now that we are here with our infusion altar, it's time to make the two things that we need to make our silver wood wand thomium capped blah 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 thingy. Uh, we're going to need those charged thomium caps. And to do that, we're going to need some salus mundus. Uh, you make this, uh, it's, it's, let's see, we'll look it up in the Thalmanomicon. Uh, I believe it's under alchemy, might be under our thaumaturgy. Actually, I kind of forget where it is. Oh, I'll tell you what, hang on, we'll just do this. Um, so you can make it either with ethereal essence, which you get by killing wisps and an entropy shard, or you can put mana beans again with a shard, and you get these from uh, magical forest biomes. So you're going to need a lot of this. You're going to need a good supply of it. And what you can do is grab an inert thalmium cap, put that in the middle. Then you're going to put these kind of evenly spaced around it. So one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. And so if we look at it from up above, that's pretty symmetrical. And then you're also going to need Essentia. So if we look in our Thalmanomicon, in order to make a charged Thalmium cap, we're going to need 6 Aurum Essentia and 12 Potentia Essentia. <laughs> 12 Potentia Essentia. So we're going to need 3 P-R-A-E, there we go, Recantatio, um, what was it, Aurum, and what was the last one, Potentia. And I would have had this set up earlier, but because I hadn't yet discovered these aspects, um, I couldn't search for them and put them in here. I could only do the primal ones. So anyways, we have Precantatio, uh, Aurum, and Potentia. Excellent. So now we are ready to craft this charged Thalmium wand cap. And pretty easy to do. All you've got to do is hit the runic matrix right click with your wand. And it'll start draining the Essentia. You can see... Ooh. Okay, so that was some flux. Uh, that is a bad thing. We hate seeing flux. Sometimes you need to be very careful... Whoa! I'm not sure why I'm getting so much flux all of a sudden. Um, you need to be very careful because sometimes this thing will knock um, the items that you put on the pedestals off and generate flux and all kinds of bad stuff. And to counteract that, you need mob skulls either mob skulls or uh, crystal clusters, which you make by putting crystals in a pattern like a six by six like this, or candles. Um, these will all cancel out some flux, but the more complicated stuff that you do, the um, more instability there is. So for instance, this is moderate instability as opposed to this, well, oh, that's moderate as well. Um, that's made in a crafty table, I don't know. Some things have minor instability, some things are even more unstable, so it just depends on what you're doing, really. Um, so, for instance, Boots of the Traveler, they have negligible instability, so you probably don't need this many mob skulls. Anyway, so that gives us two charged Thalmium Wand Caps. Then we're going to need um, all of these shards. So you put a Silverwood log in the middle, a Salus Mundus on a, what do you want to call it, thing, a pedestal? Then you put one of each shard along each of these, and again, you try to make it as symmetrical as possible. Um, and this time is not going to work out as well because 
it's 7, and 7, 12 is not divisible by 7 evenly. So again, it's kind of symmetrical, but not really. Um, so we just kind of hope it works, <laughs> is what we do. And we hit it again, and if everything works out, this should make us a silverwood rod. So it'll take 9 of each aspect, or of each essentia, so you can see that that's counting down as we look at this and the essentia is flowing from these warded jars into the altar. These have to be pretty close to the altar. They don't have to be like touching it, but um, the closer the better, I would say, um, in order to reduce flux. You don't want it trying to search for those because the more time this takes, the more time there is for things to go wrong. And we don't want things going wrong oh, like that. Where did that go? Okay, so now then after it's done with that, it starts taking these things Seems to be going okay. Okay, good. Whew. A little bit nervous. You, you'll need tons of mob skulls, honestly, guys. But when it's done, you have your silverwood rod. And you might think that we're done, but we're not quite done. Because if we put this in our crafting table, you can see that it costs, uh-oh, 54V. So if you'll remember, this wand only holds 50 of each V. So how are we going to make this? Well. What we can do is we already made our goggles of revealing and so actually here let's take these off so if we tried to make it with our gold banded wand costs 54. however if we put on our goggles of revealing then it only costs 51. so we can further go along this line by making some enchanted fabric um, with some wool some string any one of each aspect uh, then you can use that to make these robes. So we have a chest piece, we have some leggings, and we have some boots. And when we put these on, these each give us a discount as well. So if we go back over here, really slowly, we can see that it now costs only 48. So if we fill this up completely, we could in fact make this wand. However, there's one more thing that we could do. If you make a wand focus, which you can find in the Thaumonomicon, there's tons of different wand foci. In through here. If you make a wand focus and you enchant it with frugal three, then you go to your wand and you hold down F, that'll show you all of the foci that you have in your inventory, click on it, then you can, this will reduce the cost even further. So now it only costs 40. So yay, we could make this, uh, sil this silverwood rock wand. And I guess that's probably about it. Um, there's tons and tons and tons more stuff that you can make. For instance, staves, which hold a lot more uh, V. And, of course, you'll have to make different more robes and all this different stuff. But it's very cool. It's very fun. I, I enjoy it a lot. And it's pretty powerful. It's, it's a good tool for the game. Lots of good stuff that you can make. Um, so, I guess, really quick, just to review. The first thing that you need to make when you get into a world is a Thalmanomicon, an iron capped wooden wand and a thalmometer and you need to scan everything that you can find in order to get research points in order to unlock everything in the thalmonomicon. As well there are three different uh, realms of aspects. You have research points and research points are only used in the research table. You have V um, which you can get from these aura nodes to fill up your wands and V is only used in these arcane work tables, and sometimes it's used like in the world to, for instance, to make the arcane infusion altar or to use different foci. Um, and the final one is Essentia, and Essentia is only used in the, <laughs> in the Crucible or in the infusion altar. So those are the three. If you're using the infusion altar, you're going to want Essentia. If you're using the research table, you're going to want research points. And if you're using the work table, you're going to want V. So uh, hopefully that clears some things up. I uh, hope you guys found this tutorial entertaining and informative. Learned a lot. Uh, if you did, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Give me any comments and questions that you may have. And I will see you guys in the next video.